Um, yeah, so today I'll be talking about the internals of generators. My name is Steph, and these are my socials. Uh, I'm mostly active on Blue Sky, and if you need a Blue Sky invite, let me know. Um, you might know me from the Recurse Center, and I currently work as a software engineer at Protocol Labs, and I was also previously a maintainer of Python Poetry. Um, for today's agenda, uh, we'll be talking about iterables, iterators, generators, and how generators are implemented in CPython. Uh, so let's begin with what is an iterable. An iterable is an object that implements uh, the iter method or get item. Uh, let's take a look at some examples of what an iterable is. Uh, so hopefully, to no one's surprise, a uh, list is something that you can loop over, and so it's something that you can iterate and is an iterable. And so are tuples and strings as R as well. Dictionary items are also something that you can iterate over. So these are all things that you can iterate, and that's why they're called iterables. Uh, additionally, an iterable returns an iterator object. Uh, what is an iterator object? Um, iterators were introduced in PEP 234 as a way to formalize an intera iteration interface that objects can provide to control the behavior of for loops. I highly recommend reading this pep because it's really easy to read and provides a lot of the motivation why we have uh, iterators today. Um, more importantly, um, an iterator is an object that implements the next method, which uh, should provide you what the next value of the sequence is. And it should also raise the stop iteration exception when there are no more values left in the sequence to iterate. So let's try creating our own iterator. Here, I have a very simple uh, implementation of a singly linked list called class node. Uh, I didn't think properly when I wrote this slide. Um, but with this node, you, you will be able to create a singly linked list. So this class has uh, two attributes, data, which can hold any kind of value, and the uh, next, which uh, will tell you what the next node is. And if we remember, for an iterator object, we need two conditions, a next method. So I have implemented the next method here, which should give me the value in self dot, from self.next. And the second condition of having an iterator object is that it raises a stop iteration exception when there are no more values found. So I have checked both of that off, and I can now say that I have an iterator object with this uh, node class. Um, OK, so I am able to use that node class and uh, actually get the values by using a while loop. But it's not very, uh, in my opinion, aesthetically pleasing. What if I could actually traverse through this singly linked list and get all of the values using Python's uh, for loops, which have, um, which are very, how to say this, very user friendly or friendly to the eyes. Um, so what I'll do actually is I will lift out all of this like code from current node uh, the while, and the while loop and put this into the iter method. So I just took, uh, that code and put this into the iter method. And it, uh, if you recall, um, iterable returns an iterator object. So in this case, it is the node class, so itself. Um, and th with this iter method, I now have an iterable. Um, I can now have an iterable object. Uh, and here, once again, I'm creating a singly linked list, and I'm actually able to get the values of this singly linked list using the for loop instead of this uh, while loop from a while back. So we went from this to uh, a nice for loop, all because we put all of that while loop logic in this iter method. Um, and if I take a look at what, um, what is the type of the return value of that iter method, I get a generator. Uh, does anybody know why this is a generator? from this, um, from the, the value that is being yielded by the iter method? Yeah. 
Yes, exactly. It's the yield keyword. Um, using yield turns your, the iterator method into a generator function. And generators were introduced in PEP 255, and the motivating example was actually the tokenized uh, module from the standard library. This is how the tokenized module looked like back then. Um, back, it actually required a callback function, in this case, token eater. And one of the issues was that it was really difficult to remember state um, because you would often have to uh, manage the state yourself to keep track of what, let's say, tokens you have seen and what you expect to see. So another uh, module in the standard library called tab nanny actually had a state machine in global variables. And so it was, it's really uh, complicated. Uh, I urge you to take a look at it so you can see how it was like back then and how difficult life was. Um, and so the authors of PEP 255 proposed that you can actually solve this state management issue and not have to deal with state via global variables by producing an entire parse of the Python program at once in a list. Uh, can you imagine why this would be problematic? Can somebody um, tell me maybe if, yeah? You have to store that entire list even though all your memory? Yes, exactly. And there's another um, potential issue as well. Okay. Um, I think the second one is like a little bit more uh, uh, not as known. So as uh, uh, an audience member correctly said, um, this if you have a large number of inputs, it might not fit in memory. So it's an, um, and it, you can, memory allocation cannot be pre-computed. Pre um, so it's an a priori bound problem. And second, the whole output might not even be necessary. What if you actually only needed to tokenize the first, or you, what if you only actually needed the uh, first few outputs and not the entirety of it? Uh, so now let's try and just look at what a simple generator function looks like. And this is really the simplest generator function that I could think of as a function with three yield statements. Um, and we are able to uh, loop through the values uh, that's being yielded by this generator function because, uh, I, because the yield uh, produces a generator. And uh, one really nice thing as well about, um, uh, that was also introduced from PEP 255 is the yield from. So instead of having to do something like what is in grocery list two, where you have to do two different for loops for, a diff for two different generators, you can instead just call yield from another generator function instead of um, this very verbose piece of code from grocery list two. And as you can see, the values it returns are the same. And yeah, I'll dive right into the implementations of the implementation of generators in CPython. Um, the simplest uh, recipe I could think of for generators was that it needed some kind of structure, something that creates that structure, so an initializer, and something that executes that generator. So um, has anybody here taken a look at C Python code before? Okay. Yeah, it's uh, pretty. <laughs> it's pretty hard. Uh, so I really struggled with it when I was like looking at looking at this a few months ago. Um, so here, if the the PyGen object um, is the structure that actually is, um, I would say, I guess, created when uh, you create a generator. And inside this PyGen object is the PyGen object head macro. And uh, we pass the GI prefix because it will replace the, the prefixes here with the GI from the previous, from this slide. And so it should actually expand to something that looks like this. But you don't need to remember any of this. Um, just something to remember is that it's a structure that holds the generator's code object, its current state, and the frame it is um, doing its execution in. And now let's take a look at the initializer. So with this initializer, you have, um, uh, you, you, you accept a PyFrame object, 
and then this PyFrame object is passed into GenU with qual name. Uh, so what is a PyFrame object? Um, it just kind of appeared out of nowhere. So PyFrame objects are used by the Python interpreter to execute a function. And you can think of it as something that keeps track of the local and global variables of your current uh, stack frame, the bytecode, and the execution stack. So I thought that actually a really nice way to visualize of what a, a frame was is this um, the frames that are being shown to you in Python Tutor. Um, you can also check the permalink so you can see how, uh, how uh, a ge this specific generator um, is being kind of put onto the frame and uh, 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 popped off of the stack and so on. Okay, and um, actually most of the magic of the generators happens here when you initialize the generator. Um, so first we get the bytecode of the, of the code object from the generator's frame, and then we calculate the size that is needed uh, for, to, to allocate the memory for that uh, variable. And we make sure that that is uh, garbage collectible, which again adds to the memory efficiency of generators. And we copy the frame because we want to make sure that generators uh, have an independent context from its caller because generators should be able to run concurrently. Um, and this is also, uh, if, if, if you wanna dive deeper into this, you, this also um, is why you can have asynchronous generators. And finally, uh, you track the object for garbage collection so that as soon as, uh, as, soon as the value has been yielded, uh, you can just like throw it away and that memory is once again freed. So in short, uh, this genu with qual name calculates the size of the generator and allocates the memory for the generator to be created. And for execution, whenever next is being run or being called by your generator, it calls gen iter next in, C, in the C code underneath and then gen send um, x2. Um, so within gen send x2, um, I, uh, so, as a disclaimer, I actually cut out a lot of the uh, code from Gensend X2 because it wouldn't fit uh, on the slides or neither in my 15 minutes. So I just took the most important parts for this talk. So first we set the state to be executing because the generator should not be running while we're trying to yield a value. And on uh, point two, this is where the generator code is being run until it hits yield, return, or exception. Um, and finally, all of these following assertions just make sure that the Python thread state is consistent with the generator's state. Okay, um, so if there is a result and the generator is uh, paused, so its status is frame suspended, um, that means it can be resumed later. So that's just a result that's going to be yielded. And we notify caller that, this, that there's a next value with pygen underscore next. And if the generator is done, that means there's no more, um, uh, that means that result should be none because there's no value to be yielded and generator's done, then we can clear the result and do some cleanup. And finally, we let the caller know if return a value, um, pygen return or raise an exception, pygen underscore error. Uh, what just happened? Um, I feel like that was a lot of C code and at some point, to be honest, I got lost as well when I was preparing these slides. Um, but we just look at how generators are implemented under the hood very loosely. Um, so we just look at the happy path. Um, and I wanted to kind of show like why generators use memory efficiently through some of the like more important parts of the C Python code. Um, so first we had the frame object um, in pygen object, which maintains the state of the generator. And because um, only the current value and state is being 
kind of kept track of and being saved in memory instead of, an, instead of all of the results of a list, for example, um, the memory footprint is much smaller. Um, and we also, instead of using pi object underscore new var, which um, allocates uh, some memory for you for a variable with Python, we use gc underscore new var um, to make sure that it is uh, participating in garbage collection and that that memory is reclaimed as soon as it's no longer needed. Um, thank you. And here's some resources. Um, I really encourage you to take a look at PEP 234 and PEP 255 if you want to learn more about generators. Thank you for your presentation. <laughs> if you have any questions, please raise your hand. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much for your talk. Everybody, please give a huge round of applause.